Hello everybody, it's Danny Wanda back from Deep South Homestead. Guys, today we're over at the Farm All Barn. Uh, we're going to be taking the Farm All Cub over to the uh, garage and we're going to be converting it from 6 volt to 12 volt. Now before we do, we're going to take off the, uh, we're only going to take the hoppers off of the planter and the fertilizer because there's no need to have them on there, they'll just be in the way. Guys, the reason we're doing this is where we live at, I cannot get a six volt battery. I spent almost a month getting a six volt battery here. Uh, we've got tractor supply here. They don't carry them here. Uh, all of our parts houses, nobody carries them. I ordered the battery that I have here and it took almost a month to get it in. And then when I got here, it wasn't even charged. I had to charge it. And we keep having problems with, uh, I'm having to have the headlights turned on in order for the generator to charge. And, it, it, and if I wind on it very much, if it floods a little bit and I have to wind on it at least bit, then the thing goes down and it don't want to hold a good charge for a long period of time. So I'm just going to go ahead and do the conversion now. When we do it, we show you step by step what we're doing and how we're doing it. But that's the main reason. Now, I love the fact that I can crank it by hand. I love that. But I also know that it's real easy to get your arm broke doing that. And I'm too old to have that happen to me. So what I'm going to be doing is just trying to revamp this thing and get it where we, we need to use it. We can just fire it up and, and go with it. Okay guys, this is a procedure I go through if I hand crank it. Now sometimes it cranks and sometimes it don't. I make sure we out of gear, we're in neutral. I pull my choke out, I make sure the kill switch is off. The other thing I gotta do is turn the gas on. And I come around. I make two little turns like that with it. Go back, I push the choke in. I turn the ignition switch on. I just lost my she shed, right? Yeah, for a little while. What I did was I turned the gas off and let it burn all the gas out of the carburetor and all that kind of stuff so all my fuel lines would be empty. When I start disassembling it, it won't be having lots of gas dumping everywhere and all that will be cleaned out. So now comes the daunting task. The first thing we'll be doing is we'll be taking the muffler. Once this cools off, I'm going to let it cool off. We're going to take the muffler off. We'll take the uh, breather cap off. Radiator cap off, all the screens that goes in front of the radiators, and just go around and start taking all the bolts off. That's why I went with all the new bolts. Most of them are stainless. Uh, done that because I knew I'd have to be taking this thing off. All these screws I put in here are all stainless. And we're going we got lots of electrical lines in here that's hooked up with uh, to bolts underneath all this. We're gonna undo all that kind of stuff. Uh, we'll be undoing the choke rod fuel rods, all that kind of stuff's all got to come undone. And then, we will lift this thing up off of here where we can actually begin the process of disassembling this thing. Now I will, I believe I'm going to go ahead and undo the instrument panel from the frame uh, housing here because I have to get back in here to redo uh, this. This is a six volt uh, gauge here. I'm going to take this six volt gauge out. I have an amp meter and I have a volt meter. I'm really torn between which one I want to put in there. 
I probably might go with the voltmeter because it tells me the condition of the battery where an amp meter doesn't. Um, just some issues like that that I'm, I'm, I'm just kind of torn on. Now I did locate a battery that's supposed to fit in this box that's a 12 volt, which we have sitting right over here. The only thing is that thing cost me an arm and a leg because of its size. So I'm just hoping that the height part of it is not going to be an issue. I'm hoping that maybe it's going to still go in there and I can put my battery box lid on it. But what I wanted was it to stay looking as original as I could possibly get it. The first thing we want to do on this tractor before we do any kind of disassembling or anything is we want to be able to take the battery box cover off of it. And I'm going to undo... Now this is a positive ground system. I'm going to undo the positive right here, which is the net, which is the ground. I'm going to do the ground first. Then we're going to come over here and undo this cable, and we're going to lay the cables off out of here, just so we're safe while we're working on it. We don't have any types of uh, electrical issues, sparks, shorten out, or anything like that. One of the things I done whenever I uh, rewired the cub was I put plug-ins on all the lights just for this very reason here. And for those of you who are wondering how will I know which one goes where, when I put it together, I put a male on one and a female on the other one. One other thing that you might want to do when we hook this back up is use a dielectric grease in these because they're exposed to the weather. That way we won't have to worry about uh, corrosion or anything like that. The reason we have a larger bolt here is these older tractors, somebody had stripped it all out and I had to go and put a larger bolt in it. It's a pretty simple procedure guys, we just got to go all the way around the hood and take out all these little 7 16 bolts. Uh, that's in here. I put them all in stainless so I wouldn't have to worry about rusting. This is a positive ground so we're going to remove the positive cable here off of the battery before we remove the hood. This is just in case something happens we won't uh, we won't have an electrical issue when we lift the hood up. Uh, now we have no fire anywhere. So that's our safety now. Before we lift anything off the hood, I've got to undo the fuel line underneath it so that when we lift the tank up, we can just pick it up and we can set it over here out of the way. And Because the tank is parked right here. Yeah, it's, it's actually- It comes up with it. It comes with it, so I've got to undo the fuel line. And that's why we let it run and run out of fuel. Now it doesn't mean that there's not gonna be any more fuel in it at all but it let most of the fuel run out of the carburetor and drain down out of this line and everything. So we're gonna to try to be really, really careful with it. I'm gonna try to undo it up under the tank in there, which is a challenge because there's not much room in there to, to move around and do anything. It's, it's kind of a pretty tight place to have to get in there. One of the things I wanna talk about on the Cub tractor, the reason a lot of Cubs burn is people will come in here, this fuel line right here needs to be all steel all the way from the 
a sediment bowl to the carburetor. What happens is a lot of people have put rubber tubing on this thing and the exhaust is sitting right here. And if you happen to get a crack in that rubber tubing and it spews gas over onto this manifold system here and it catches on fire, the only way to turn this off is to reach your arm from the other side up under here to turn it off. And if it's on fire, you can't run your arm up under there. So lesson learned, not from me, but from talking to many older farmers around, I went and bought a 5 16 inch brake line from the parts store because this one came with a rubber line on it. And I take and took a tubing benders and a flaring tool and I, re, I, I just designed a fuel line to go on this thing out of all steel so that I don't have to worry with the fact of, of gas ever spewing on here from a broken rubber line. So that's just a, a tidbit I thought I'd throw out there because if it starts catching on fire, it's going to burn. There ain't much you can do about it. Hmm. Oh, I gotta have another wrench. Gonna take two of them. My, if, if it'd been my daddy, my daddy would have took a wrench and he'd have went to the shop and he would have cut it, and he'd have made a wrench for this right here. Cause there's just not much room to work. And we fuss about the new modern vehicles today because there's no room in them. <laughs> ah, the old tractors were the same way in a lot of aspects. All right, guys, for the ease of... See, that's what I tell you. You say there ain't no fuel left in something, even though I let it sit there and run. All right, guys, up under the hood here, I have clamps and things to hold the wiring in place. So we've got to get up under here and undo all of this. I've got it zip-tied plus the thing, so I'm going to take my little snippers here and we're going to snip these zip ties off of here. There's one thing I've learned. Keep that wiring tight. All right, one thing we want to do is make sure we feed our wires back through the little rubber grommets because I put all new grommets on this whenever we rewired it. both our wires now all right we got our little bolts right here i was about to forget them one on each side yep because this was a specific little bolt i had to put in here because they are very very short where they don't go through into the radiator Bowl. All right. Now. Now we got a naked tractor. Everything on this one was put on it brand new when I rebuilt it. New voltage regulator. I mean, everything's new. All of it. Coils. Everything's all brand new. All right, guys. We got the keeper out of the choke rod. Now let's see if we can. This is all put on here new. So let's uh. Get it out of here. And this is our starter one. We're gonna take it out. Get it out. This is a custom built wiring harness that I put together whenever I rewired the whole cub. So now what I've got to do is start taking it apart. And I've taken all the tape off of it that I have on it. I went, this is stuff that I picked up at the uh, electrical, I mean at the uh, automotive store, which I found is great to use guys. I'll be putting it back for sure. That way I can get to all my wires here because when I take the generator off, all these wires that go with this generator, I'm going to try to leave them with the generator so that if I ever in the future have to have it back, I'll have it and I won't have to uh, be concerned. Now, a lot of y'all probably saw these two wires sticking out from under the edge of the hood here. When you unhook your battery cables only six volts, in order for them to start charging again, you have to re-excite this generator. 
and you have to touch two of your wires together under here, rather than do that, you have to pull the whole hood off to redo it again. So I just ran me two wires from those two points right here out, and I can just take a short wire on the outside and touch them and let it spark to re-excite this thing. I took an extension and a wiggler and reached down there and took the two bolts out of the bottom of that. They're two 9 16 bolts. And we'll slide this back now. By sliding this back, that allows me access in behind this here because I can technically take it and rotate it and do whatever I need to do. I don't, the battery cables are undone. I don't have to worry about shorting anything out. I can lay this back and I can get to it now. Now really, if I just unzip tie one wire right here that goes to the back light, it'll give me a little bit more freedom, which I believe I will do that. Now when I set this generator off of here, I have the bolts undone on it, but these are, sometimes these can be kind of tricky to get off of here. You just gotta screw them out of there, but sometimes they'll come out pretty easy. That one's out. Now, lots of times this belt here will not come loose very easy because this is really a tight fit and I try to roll it and roll the belt off. There we go. Now, what I'm going to do is take this generator, if I can get it up off of here, and I'm gonna set it back here on top of the hydraulic pump while I go through and I'll be disconnecting the different wires and where they go down in here, the ones that we're not going to be needing with this, I'm going to leave this wiring harness with it and I'm going to put it all into a box along with this coil here. This is a six volt coil. We're going to be undoing it and we're going to be putting a new 12 volt coil on it. We're going to be changing out the brackets here and here. I bought a kit to specifically switch this one out with, and we're gonna make sure that this thing fits. Guys, we're gonna take the old bracket off. It ain't as far as I guess it has ever been off of here. Okay, guys, what I did, I bought a kit from Steiner's Tractor Company. Uh, it has the alternator bracket bottom and top. And when you buy, make sure you get the ABC 3551 for the Cub. This is a small, tiny alternator. It's a one wire. Uh, you have to specify on the pulley the width of your uh, belt when you order. But this one is so that uh, you don't have to alter the hood of the tractor because this one fits up under the hood of the tractor. Now, I haven't actually mounted it yet. I'm going to try to mount this everything before I actually undo all the wiring and everything from the 6 volt system. Just in case I have an issue, I can put it all back and still use the tractor while I order a reorder, do whatever I got to do. But this is the whole kit that I bought right here. Now, I'm choosing not to use the original, uh, the new coil bracket because uh, the one I have has uh, specific places on it to hook ground wires and stuff, and I already have the wiring harness made for it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to install this uh, alternator bracket. Guys, sometimes these old things like this, as old as this tractor is, this bracket's probably never been off of here. It was all full of dirt cake back in there, so I'm having to run a, a tap through it. Had to have a special setup here just to get that tap in here because there's no room to work with anything. So we got it all tapped out now. Dirt's all out of it. Old rust and everything from just years and years of just being sitting there and not ever being taken out. Okay. Let's see if we can get this thing to lay down in here. Okay. Nut on the back of that one, if it'll go on there. Okay, it's a lock nut, I see that. Come on. Mm, there we go. It's gonna work where it's supposed to. 
The answer is actually no. The belt is too short for the bracket. There's no holes. I'm gonna have to drill the. Will it work if you drill it? Yeah, if I drill it. So I've got to go drill the bracket. And the thing about it is, I've got to have a slot. So I'm gonna have to drill it with a slot. And it's got to be at least from right here, looking at my hole in the back back there, it's gotta go at least from there you know, across here. And I, now I'm wondering, is that gonna hit the hoods anymore? This bracket, I had to go and re-drill another set of holes all the way across here. I didn't wanna just drill it all the way because I didn't know if it might weaken it. Because mine's not gonna come that far out anyway. And, and it's not because I have a shorter belt. This alternator said that it fits my original generator. My original generator was just fine. Matter of fact, this was the original belt that I ordered for this tractor, and it fit the generator fine. I had to actually rebend the angles in the bracket or either stack a bunch of washers behind the bolt on the, where it mounts to the frame up here of the uh, neck on the uh, radiator part here. I didn't want to do that, so I just take and put it in the vise. I rebent it. I drilled this. I repainted it red so that it would look original again. And we're going to see if we can get this thing to line up to where the bolts will go back in it. And these bolts all make about three or four rounds, and then they get really hard to turn. So I'm going to, hopefully, it's not going to be a problem. I mean, even I'm looking at the, the belt, it doesn't line really, really good with the, uh, uh, as a matter of fact, if we can get the camera up here, okay. You can see there it's I don't know if the camera just doesn't do it justice it the belt doesn't line really good I mean it's off about an eighth of an inch and I don't know if that's going to affect the bearing in the alternator or the bearing in the pump here but I guess in time we will just we'll see okay guys this is the wiring assembly for the new 3551 mini alternator for the Cub uh, I'm fixing to replace the coil, and what I have to do, this, this coil has a, uh, re, an, an internal resistor built within the coil so I can bypass the resistor. I've got to figure out what parts of the coil hook to which parts now. I installed the coil. Now this is a ABC 509 12 volt coil, has an internal resistor in it. Uh, I've already hooked up the negative side to the distributor. The positive side I will hook up when I start doing the rest of the wiring. I chose to keep the old bracket because it has a grounding point on it that I use for the headlights. The new one did not have that. So I chose to leave this one on here and just use it. I'm gonna take the ignition uh, switch out of here. This is on and off switch is all it is. I went and purchased a heavy duty 12 volt switch to go on this rather than one of the old push button ones. Uh, this one is a, a heavy duty, like a 30 amp one. I went ahead and done it like using 18 wheelers. I put this one in here so that I would make sure that I had something that would work efficiently. I ended up going with the voltmeter gauge anyway. Well, the voltmeter and ampmeter gauges hook up totally different. Uh, I had to rerun all my wires differently to the ignition switch right here. I mean, it looks like a mess back in here, but I'm gonna try my best to explain this. The positive side of the voltmeter has to go to the ignition side of the ignition switch that once you turn it on, fire goes to the voltmeter gauge. The other side goes to a really good ground. Now I opted to go ahead and put a light in it and I hooked the light to the uh, low beam side, low and high beam side of my switch. Now I want to look and see if that actually works. Okay, we're going to flip the switch on. Okay, we're going to touch the cable here. Okay, the battery okay. condition is about 13, which means it's not fully charged. Okay, now we're going to switch this to the low high beam. We're going to see if the light and the gauge comes on. 
which it does. So it, that's good. Okay, we have the switch turned on. We're gonna to try to keep this from sliding down. I'm gonna to touch this to the negative and I'm gonna grab the uh, starter switch here. We're gonna see if this thing actually spins over. Now we're in neutral, make sure we're in neutral. cranked up. Now I didn't look to see if, the, uh, I was so excited that it cranked, I didn't even look to see if the voltmeter gauge was actually working. Okay guys, here we are back early this morning. Uh, Miss Wanda had to go in and do a lot of stuff in the house and I had to go ahead and finish up the wiring here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk to you about the wiring and I'm going to try to explain it the best that I can. Now, we installed the new mini alternator. It's a one wire alternator. We talked about that already. I uh, had to do some fabrication of the bracket like we talked about, about having to cut other holes in it because it wasn't fitting the way it was. I had to rebend it in order to make it fit the cub like it should. We used the uh, 12 volt coil on here from Steiner's. Now this one has a built-in resistor. We kept the old coil bracket just simply because it has a grounding point on it right here and I needed places to ground headlights and different things too so that I kept that bracket. Now on this particular coil, the 12 volt, the negative side goes down to the distributor. They don't tell you this in any of the instructions. The positive side comes up around through here and comes all the way back through this wiring harness up here and goes to the side of the ignition switch that I have here. Now I just have a toggle switch for my ignition switch, but it goes to the side that when you flip it on, like if I flip it over and it's on, that heats up the coil. That goes to the side that is not hooked to the battery. Now this, this switch has two sides to it. One side has the battery wire coming from the starter here all the way up to the battery side of this ignition switch. The other wire that's hooked to it is the core of the alternator wire. The one wire from the alternator comes all the way around up there and it hooks to that same side of that switch that the battery wire hooks to. Now, the other side of the switch has a place for a screw on it. That's where the coil hooks to there is a fuse down here at the bottom. This fuse hooks to that side and it comes up through here and hooks back to the light switch. The light switch has a fuse system in it right here. That hooks to that side of that switch also. There is also another wire that comes off of that that comes over here and hooks to the positive side of the voltmeter. The negative side of the voltmeter comes as a black wire that comes around through here and comes all the way back up and runs to this grounding port here on the coil. The other two wires go to the headlights. They're the ground for the headlights up here. So this is the grounding system that's here. That's what the ground wires are. That is how the voltmeter is hooked up. Also in the voltmeter is a light in the back of it. There is, this is a two wire light, a hot wire and a ground wire, a black wire and a red wire. The black wire is the ground. The black wire also hooks to the ground side of the voltmeter. The hot wire for that light hooks to the low beam, high beam side of the headlight switch here. So that when we turn the lights on, then the light in the gauge comes on because there's no need in the light for the on the gauge to come on unless you're running the headlights. So that, in a nutshell, is the wiring diagram for the conversion part of this farm all cub. Now, guys, it's been since the the '70s since I was in college studying mechanicing. If you see something here that I did not do right. 
please let me know. I'm not perfect, okay? I realize that it's been a long, long time. And there are some issues here. I mean, I found one video online from a guy called uh, Just Tinkering that actually explained in detail where all the wires went. I went and looked at it just to be sure because, like I said, it's been a long time. Most of the other vehicles, I mean, uh, other videos that have to do with the Farmall, Cub, or any Farmall, even I went to Steiner's where this came from, all they talked about was hooking up their wiring harness. And it has, and they said, well, this wire's labeled to go here, this wire's labeled to go there. They don't tell you what the wire's for. They don't tell you anything about the wire, what it does, the size of the wire, anything like that. You want to also, let me bring this to your attention. Anytime you have a battery wire, like uh, this one here, this hook to the starter, the one hooked to the alternator, these are 10 gauge wires. You want to make sure you run the right gauge wire because 12 volt systems will burn very quickly if you do not use the right size wiring system on them. So be conscious of that when you're hooking up your wiring on this. This battery, I had to go to a parts house and go through all their batteries and measure to get a battery that actually fit in this battery box that's a 12 volt I had to put a piece of treated wood up underneath it to lift it up because when I set it in here, the battery cable was going to cut into the edge of this here and over time it would have wore into it and shorted out because that's the positive. The negative, um, this was a positive ground, so this cable is way big on it here. I'm going to have to tighten this down to make it work, but nevertheless, I'll be able to work that out. Lots of people don't put the original battery boxes back on them whenever they upgrade them to a 12 volt and I wanted it to still look original. So I bought this battery specifically. Now this battery, I'm gonna tell you, was about $200, I'm not gonna lie, to fit this specific application. So be aware of that. This is not a cheap conversion when you get ready to do it. All right guys, I took the fuel line and turned it out to the side right here. Now this. This is gonna be a balancing act here. I hope I can do this. Oh, I gotta get where I see my, where the light. I'm, I'm just gonna pour enough gas in here to go into the carburetor. Cause I wanna make sure this is all going to work before I put all this hood back on here. Okay, that should be enough gas to, literally to crank it, all I gotta do is put the battery cable on. And I'm hope, I'm not, I'm gonna, hopefully that will work, not tightening it down. Make sure it's in neutral. Um, flip the switch on here. The gauge is working. And all I should have to do, I'm gonna take and choke it just a little bit over here because the choke rod's off. Excited. It cranked up, it ran. Looks like everything's going to work all right. I'll take the battery cable back off. Uh, put that back off. We'll take the fuel line back loose here. Me and this one is going to set the hood back down on here. We're going to start bolting this thing all back together. But first, I'm going to go through and zip tie all this stuff and retape it and all so that um, all the wiring harness is all taken care of like it needs to be. That's it. It's a matter of putting it back together. One of the things that we just discovered, the original owner bought aftermarket six volt actual lights. Not the original light kit that was in it that had where you could replace the bulb, 
But this is a rig this is just six volt aftermarket lights and he's got them siliconed in. So I'm gonna have to go back and try to find the original lights to put on here. I'm just not even gonna hook them up. Now the, re the rear one, I bought the original to go back on it and I replaced the bulb, the six volt bulb in it. And let's see if it works for the rear. Oh uh, yeah, there we go. Okay. I was thinking that's what we could do for the uh, front too, but the owner did not put the original lights back on it like it was supposed to be. So that's another thing I've got to work out on it. So we're fixing to find out now that I got it all put back together, got the fuel hooked up, got the fuel turned on, if it's going to run and how it's going to do. Well, I guess you want your she said back, don't you? Kinda. Well, he only had it for a day. It wasn't like we were here for a long period of time. So let's kind of, uh, let's see how this is all going to work out here. See if it's any better than the old six volt system was. I, I'm not even going to choke it. I'm just going to see if...